Oh, please. Heat rules 13, 17, profits on the scene, wash your souls clean before we go into the gasoline. Took a while to understand, songs 1 of them 10, brother calling me from Mississippi trying to build a man. I flushed 14 grams, it made angels rejoice, it made me and Satan divorce, no spouse of support. I'm running the course with my hand to the plow, now. putting in the pebble the way soldier James taught me how. Break it out! It strengthened my spirit when we in the building, ain't no feeling like giving the precept for a precept given Preach M.O.V. conditions Teach Self a second living We Second Timothy 215 Represent us Sheesh Will the common interest Prophesy to the wind Reveal the man of sin Enduring to the end We the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel, cause we watch it for Israel. We the watchmen for Israel, cause we watch it for Israel. We the watchmen for Israel, cause we watch it for Israel. We the watchmen for Israel, cause we watch it for Israel. We the watchmen for Israel, cause we watch it for Israel. We the watchmen for Israel. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. You are tuning in back into another episode of the Watchmen Radio, the decree of the watchers. I am Officer Simakaya. I am Officer Yoganon. I am Officer Abel. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. This is going to be the third part of the PJs. This is episode 22, and we're going to continue on. This should be the last one for now. We're going to revisit it future, but right now this is going to be the last episode. But we're going to go right into it. Let's open up with Deuteronomy. What I tell you? Psalms 23. Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh huh. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So you might wonder, why am I reading this? So verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Let's go to Psalms chapter 107 and verse 10, because we want to see what is that shadow of death return, referring to. Because as, you, as you've been watching, as you've seen, that this Bible is our history book. So what we have to understand is that shadow of death is talking about something very specific that pertains to us, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read that. Psalms chapter 107 and verse 10. Such as sit in darkness... And in the shadow of death. There go that word, that phrase again, the shadow of death. Read, what is it? Being bound in affliction and iron. Being bound in affliction and iron. Captivity. So the shadow of death is captivity. We have been in captivity. We're the only nation on this earth that has been in captivity. That were bound in affliction and iron. Read on. Because they rebelled against the words of God. Uh Uh-huh. And contemn the counsel of the Most High. So the reason these things happen is because we rebelled against the words of God. We rebelled against the rules that the Most High set forth for us. Go back to 23 and read verse 5 again. Psalms chapter 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So it said he prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. That table is this Bible. That's why we still have this Bible to this day. That's why we have the words of God. We have the words of God because even in our captivity, even in all these things, this Bible was preserved for us so that today we can look at it and see, wait a minute, that happened to me. Wait a minute, bound in affliction and iron. Wait a minute, cursed. These things are here for us so that we can remember who we are. That's why this Bible was banned. It was banned for us from reading it in captivity. But... These words have always been there. The mother was the most high preserving this table for us for today so that we can look into it and wake up, return to where we're supposed to be at. Go to Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Because this Bible is our roadmap to getting out of the conditions that we are in. This is the only way we're going to change the conditions is by us returning to the words of this book. Read. 
Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. The only way we remember the days of old is by seeking after, after this Bible. We're gonna have, we have to read the words out of the Bible with the proper understanding. We have to actually see what our forefathers went through. Because whether you know it or not, the Bible contains the history of our forefathers. Right. The things that our forefathers, David, uh, Isaiah, Moses, Aaron, these are our forefathers. And we, we look at these pages to see what our forefathers did and didn't do that whether it pleased God or didn't please God. And it's an example for us to look at and be like, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need not to do. Read. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Read. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. When we look into the words of this Bible, we look at Abraham. We look at Isaac. We look at Jacob and see the things that they did. We uh, By us searching out of this Bible, that's us asking our elders, asking our fathers. What, what, right. Okay, what did you do? How did you, Abraham was told to leave his country. That's us searching and seeing what our forefathers did. And now we are supposed to follow in their footsteps. Read it out. When the Most High divided to the nations. Now, that's it. Go to Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8 and 8. So what we're showing you, we are the watchmen. The name of the show is the watchmen of Israel. We are the watchmen. We're showing you the things that you have to do, the things that you must do, the things that you must study and look at. Because a lot of our people wonder, why do we go through the things that we go through? Hey. Where are we from? Hey. Where is our history? What is our history? And, and a lot of times we just go to Africa and we just search Africa. We just search African history and then we end up being lost in the, lost in the sauce somewhere. Hey. No, this Bible is going to tell us why we go through the things that we go through and how we fix them. Read that. The book of Job chapter 8 verse 8. Read it out. For inquire I pray thee of the former age. The way that we inquire of the former age when we looking, hey man, it got to be something more to this life. It got to be more. Why is these things happen? When we get the inquiring like that, you got to go to the Bible. You got to go to the Bible and you got to go to learn men that are able to show you what the Bible truly means, not the Christian church. Because the Christian church and the Bible don't mix. The Christian church, I'm going to say it again, the Christian church and the Bible don't mix. Because the Christian church is not going to show you what the Bible is. The Christian church is not going to show you who you are according to the Bible. That's the right. Christian church is not going to show you what God requires of you according to the Bible. They're going to show you what the white man requires of you. Read. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Because this Bible contains the, the, the history of our forefathers. Read. For we are but of yesterday uh -huh. and, and know nothing. So we know nothing. That's why we wonder why do we go through this. That's why we have those, those thoughts and wondering, what am I here for? Hey. Why do these things happen? Why is my people always at the bottom? Hey. We have those thoughts. Because now it's, it's, it's to provoke us to go and look and search in this Bible to see why we go through the things that we go through. Read on. Because our days upon earth are a shadow. Uh-huh. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter words out of their heart? So this Bible is going to teach us and tell us why. It's going to give us those answers. It's going, to fulfill, it's going to fill those gaps that we have in our mind where we have an uncertainty of who we are and why we go through the things that we go through. Hey. So that's what we're going through. That's why we're going through the PJs. Why are we, why are we in the projects across America? Because it ain't just, we highlighting Chicago, but it ain't just Chicago. We in a pro, no matter what city you go to, city to city, state to state, we are in the projects. Hey. The Jews are in the ghetto. So let's pull up that first uh, video clip. Let's pull up that first video clip. It's interesting that you say, um, no matter where we are, that we in the we in the projects, we in the ghettos. We were just at the Blitz, right. at the DC Blitz. It went Bring down at the Blitz. So I'm right. talking to my brothers, um, and we we it was one brother. He from he from Chicago, but he moved down to uh, Memphis. And then there's another brother from Memphis, and he's now living in Kansas City. So we were all talking. And the brother from Chicago that live in Memphis, he was talking about the projects. Right? I was right. like, I need to get you on the show so you can give out some of this history. He's an older brother, maybe eight, nine more years older than I am. But he has some rich history about right. the projects and the gangs and such and such. 
And we were just talking. And then the brother from Memphis, he was just like, everything y'all saying they did in Memphis too. So it's like the the they clone Tyrone movie. Whatever they do in one of our ghettos, you better right. believe they tested it and tried it out in all of our ghettos. Right. So it's not just something that's exclusive to Chicago. Right. This is worldwide amongst the Jews. Right. right. So let's play that clip. To get in. The only structure is provided by the gangs, who mark their turf with spray paint and set up sniper posts in high-rise buildings. The working poor Cabrini was designed for have long since fled, this, leaving this, the desperate this, this at alongside the help. Okay, go ahead. And I don't give a damn how hard you try to teach your kids to walk a straight line. So game fingers are the role model for these children in this neighborhood. Sixty percent of the households here are headed by single women. Patricia Welch is one of them, trying to raise three boys. Two thirds of Cabrini's residents are children. What's it like living here? Hell. Why hell? Because you don't know if a bullet gonna come through your window. You don't know. Hey, hold up, real quick. Store. Pause it real quick. Get that in Isaiah, because she said. They said, he said, the question was, what is it like living here? She said, hell. But we shown a picture on the TV that hell is uh, a, a red devil with pitchforks. Freedom. No, the black, the blacks, the Jews are living in hell because hell is captivity. Let's read that, Isaiah 5 and 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Freedom. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Pay attention to that word. It says, my people are going into captivity. When you read the Bible, we know that the Bible was addressed to the Israelites. Right. So it says, therefore, my people are going into captivity. Read. Because they have no knowledge. Because they have no knowledge. What's that knowledge? Let's hold that. Let's show what knowledge is. Because this is, these are the things that we have to really understand and know to, to really understand the Bible. Because the Christian church ain't going to show you that. The Christian church ain't the Christian church to tell you that that knowledge is some fairy tale that they done made up in their mind. Let's read that, Malachi. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So that knowledge is the law. God's law is the knowledge that our people don't have. Go back to Isaiah 5. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Read. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Therefore, what has enlarged itself? Hell has enlarged herself. So hell is captivity. That's what this, that's what we're reading. Hell is captivity. The projects, the, what the, the conditions that our people live in is captivity. Hey. They created these these projects and things like this across the across America. It's modern day captivity. It's modern day captivity. That's why we run and rampant in these cap in the in these projects and doing the things that we're doing. Read on. Let's finish this verse. And open her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices it shall descend into it. Meaning we don't have we not, we don't have the glory that we once had because we in captivity. We living in the slums and the ghettos killing each other. We living in the slums and the ghettos repping blocks that we don't own, that Esau can come in, that the white man can come and just bulldoze in a blink of an eye and it's gone, but we fighting over blocks. We no longer have our glory and our pomp like we're supposed to because we broke God's commandments. Uh, pull that video back up. Can I, let me touch on something real go quick. Ahead. Because you said something heavy. In regards to it says, therefore my people have gone to captivity because they have no knowledge. What is some of that knowledge? Well, why are women and families in the projects? Single mothers is in the projects. They don't get married, right? They're not raising up their kids. They have absentee fathers. It's drug infestation. All this knowledge that we're supposed to be applying God's laws with will actually safeguard us against the destruction of our communities. So if we don't have the knowledge, guess what? We our own worst enemy and our communities are going to be destroyed. And it says the, what else it says? It says, 
and their honorable man famished. We have to have leaders in the community. We have to have fathers. We need these things in order to, to be able to have a nation, a community, families. All of these things is what makes a productive society. Right. This is why we're at the bottom, because we don't have the, that foundation. That's all I want to add to. Pull that video back up. What's it like living here? Hell. Why hell? Because you don't know if a bullet gonna come through your window, you don't know why you're going to the store, if you're gonna be shot at, or your children be hurt in any kind of way. When was the last time they were shooting? Well, my building last night. Do you think your mother worries about you living here? Yes. Why? Because um, when you go outside, the bad, bad things happening out there. What's the closest you've ever come to getting hurt by the gangbangers? Well, one time I was playing in the playground, they just started shooting back and forth. What do you do when you hear shooting? I run. We're in a battle. Uh, we're in a battle with the gangs so, uh, for those youngsters. Paul Bob Bob so real quick, so the lady said that the, after she said it was uh, hell, he asked her why, and she said because she you have no you don't what, people I, come through the windows yeah bullets come through the windows because you don't you don't know if you're gonna live the, you don't live you don't know if you're gonna live to see the next day and there's no assurity of, the, of, the, of there's no assurance of life because bullets are flying. Left and right from the back window to the front window, she don't know. So get Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Because we 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 showing the per our goal and purpose is to show you that these things happening because we broke God's commandments. We are the Israelites that this Bible speaks of. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. I mean, Moses is letting the Israelites know. That something's going to happen in the future. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Basically, if we don't observe, if we don't read, observe the Bible, the, the instructions that God gave us and apply them. If we do opposite and break them. Read. All these curses shall come upon thee. And overtake thee. He said all these curses or bad things are going to come upon the Israelites and overtake them. Hey. Go to 66. What's one of those curses that relates to what they just, what we just uh, watched in the video? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 66. Start at 65. Yeah. Verse 65. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. That's what we just watched the sister say in the video. And the young man. You can see the fear on his face. And the sad thing is that young boy, right now he's a young boy, he fear for his life. But because he's in that environment, if he do, if he do live, if he did live to grow up, he ended up being one of them game bangers because that's his environment. That's the hey. environment that he in. Hey. Read. Most for the most of, for most of our young men. Read. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. He said, the young man said, when the bullets start flying, he running. Meaning he, the soul of his foot don't have no rest. He always running to and fro because he can't even play on the playground without worrying about uh, bullets flying. Read. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. That's what we just watched. That's what the sister just said. That's what the young man just said. Day in and day out, they we fear for our lives in these projects, in these ghettos, in these hoods. Read. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. So we, we're watching what's going on in the projects, and we're reading in the Bible how it correlates directly to us. There's no other nation on this earth that has to go through the things that we have to go through. There's no, no, there's no nation on this earth that wake up day in and day out and have none assurance of their life. This is 100% talking about us. That's what we're showing. Pull that video back up. Hmm. 
And they have Used the Chicago that Intervention time, so. Network, a city agency that works with gangs. We have what we call um, marginal youth, or what some gang members call trophies. Why trophies? Uh, they are children that are born out of wedlock, that um, the fathers oftentimes brag about how many uh, youngsters they have, uh, how many sons they have. And uh, the code word for son is trophy. That is the next wave of gang members coming up. And when you hear gang members say, you'll never stop the gangs, uh, you can't stop us. We are a nation. That's what they're referring to. So it says, so he said that the, the men that's out there, they're, they're sleeping from woman to woman to woman. They having children and they saying they children are trophies. So basically what they're doing is they having the children and then they rearing up the children to be game bangers like them. And you wonder why the streets are like they are now, where it's worse than what it was then because that's what they did. They, they set these things up. Let's read verse, uh, Proverbs 22 and 16 real quick. That's the right verse, right? That's what I'm looking for, right? No, 22 and 6. 22 and 6, not 16. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So what we supposed to be doing is training up our children in the laws of God and righteousness. Training them up so that they could be better than us and keeping God's commandments. But what we just witnessed is them training their sons up to be more worse, worse terrorizers of the community than them. Because that's what's going on. That's why right now it's so reckless in all neighborhoods that we are in. It's so reckless because the, the I don't even want to say men, the, the boys that had these children didn't have the right mindset on raising them up. They was, even if they was in the gang life, they were supposed to be raising their sons up to be better than them, not be a, a, a worse. Um, Think about it, though. They are, in a sense, growing them up to be a different version or, in their right. mind, a better version of themselves. They were. they were hardened criminals. They're going to be the most strongest, harder right. criminal. Right? right? They're going to... And they hard, they think it's going to last forever. They right. got the spirit of Esau on them thinking that their houses will dwell forever. Yep. Can I get a precept real quick? Go ahead. Give me Isaiah 28 and 15. Isaiah 28 and 15 because he stated that he worked with the community and that these men brag about how we ain't going to stop the game. God begs to differ. Let's read. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. We are in agreement with death. Read. And with hell are we at agreement. The sister called the living quarters of the projects hell. These men who terrorize those communities, they in agreement with beat, beating their brothers and sisters over the head. Right. Taking their money from them. They right. agree with that. They agree with the powers that be putting us in subservient conditions right. so they can do what? Themselves be put up a little higher than everybody else. Read. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. So when it, when, when the buildings get knocked down, I'm going to get my voucher. I'm going to move on to the next block, the next community, the next city. And I'm going to just continue doing what I did here. I'm going to do that. Nothing can phase me. Read. It shall not come unto us. It ain't going to bother us because our kids going to be even more terrorizers. We're going to make the GD gang last forever. We're going to make the vice lords Stand forever. What they, what they say, uh, GD to the world blow up or something, something yeah, like I that. I remember hearing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. For we have made lies our refuge. We made lies our refuge. One of the lies was, uh, you didn't play it, but in the beginning, it stated, I think you touched on it on the previous show, though. But in this very video, it stated that the housing projects were created so that it's a transitional place for you to stack some money right. so that you can buy a home. That's a lie. Hey. A lot of our people bought into that lie. They made that lie their refuge. Go ahead. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Under falsehoods have we hid ourselves. Under That's Christianity, under white Jesus, we've hid ourselves. Read. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, 
a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So we have found out who that precious cornerstone is. We have found Christ, the Savior, as our foundation. You believe in him, guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to run when problems arise. Like the people that live in those projects, a lot of them suffering those conditions because the law of God isn't prominent in their lives. That's right. Leviticus 5 and 1 says, if you see something, say something. A lot of times our people live under the, the notion of snitches get stitches so they won't say anything. Or let the streets handle it. Let the streets handle it. Street justice. Right. Yep. right? One more verse. Keep reading. Last one. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Judgment also will I lay to the lion and righteousness to the plummet. So there, the Lord said there going, there's going to be judgment. The rebels will get purged. Righteousness will reign on the earth. So the little fun you're having, have it now. Because it's all going to come to an end shortly. Keep reading. That's right. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies. Right, right. Keep going. And the water shall overflow the hiding place. The, uh, 18, and that's it. And your covenant with death shall be dismold. Di read that Dis again. Excuse me. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. It shall be no more. That gain that you said was going to continue on and nobody could stop the gain, the Lord said that's going to be disannulled. That's I just right. want to make sure that the word of God was um, mentioned about that point that we just read. Right. So, so we gonna, as we going through, we're going to continue to go, we're going to transition into said, another I thing. Said, I said read. I meant the video that we just seen. I want to make sure. <laughs> y'all yeah, got to forgive me sometimes. I stumble over my words, but y'all know what I meant. So we're going to go into another thing that, another thing that causes these behavioral disorders, quote unquote, in us where we, we grow up and uh, have these issues. Pull up that next video. Bring it out. God, but we're learning that even low levels of lead can have an impact. So we just think the level was 40 was safe, that the was 20, that was 10. And now studies show that even down to one or less, there's impairment of, of IQ and cognitive function. And so the, so we've had this sort of staggering effects uh, to our population, but it's still happening in communities of color in disproportionate ways uh, that harms millions of people, that affects their intellectual development, that provides you know these horrible deadly environments that are 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 robbing communities of color of the ability to succeed in life of their full intellectual capacity and and really affecting america as a whole so can you tell us the connection between these environmental toxins and our intelligence and iq and and how that how that actually works well of course you're right and the cdc has um, stipulated that there is no threshold for lead exposure that any amount of lead exposure is dangerous. Yeah, people say, what's but, the normal blood level of lead or mercury? I'm like, zero. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it should be. That should be the normal. <laughs> However, to say that lead has gone down is not actually true. It's gone down over the nation as a whole. Right. But if you look at places where pockets of children of color, yes, it is not. That's what down. I mean, yeah. That's where people are exposed. I mean, yeah, I knew that's exactly what you were talking about. I keep concerned and care. So that's the problem. We now have it limited to pockets of um, children who live in these areas. Once again, as I said, people who are trapped in the area, either by, either by economics or by race or by both. Um, race actually tends to be the larger factor here, but economics is a factor as well. So get Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 16 real quick. So this is one of the conditions that, uh, and it's a couple articles, but this is one of the conditions that we face Within those projects, it was a lot of lead exposure, which affects, we say it affects the cognitive function and the IQ. So what these children doing, they going to school 
and they not excelling in school. They not excelling in do actually um, being as productive if they, as they could be, which lead them to violence right. because they mind ain't right. These are all things that plague us. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So this is one of the curses. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Lead poisoning is a curse. Mm. Having lead poisoning affecting your children, a lot of our children died from it, and the other children that lived, it affected their brain function. It affected how we actually thought, creating the atmosphere of you hating your brother that looked just like you. That's us being, that's a, that's a, that's a, a evidence of us being cursed in the city. Right. Read. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Bring up that next article. Or bring up the article, rather. Not the next one, because this would be the first article. Hey, so is it safe to say we shouldn't be using number two pencils or pencils with lead in them? Yeah. I mean, that's is exposure to lead. Or, they saying zero exposure to it. They don't care what they dilute it with. Because, right. you know, they right. dilute the pencils with some type of other material. I'm not sure what it is. But should we be using graphite. pencils? Graphite. Right, right, right. Right. Is it is it lead still or is it just graphite? Well, I'm saying this. It's mixed with it. Right. Okay. Yeah, and, a, and a, when you're dealing with children, a lot of children put the pencil in their mouth. Right. Rub it out. And then you notice what she said. She, they said that it should be zero exposure. And they said that, that the lead exposure overall has went down. But they saying that it went down, but they not, they not um, including our community. Because in our community, it ain't went down. Message. Like they said in the video. Read that or uh, pull that article up. Start at the uh, top so you can see the title of the uh, article. Chicago. Chicago slums in the long shadow of lead paint. So let's, let's drop down to, that, to the uh, section. The bans on leaded gasoline and lead paint have also provided an interesting data set for social scientists. The centerpiece of Rick Nevin's research is an analysis of crime rates and lead poisoning levels across a century. The United States has had two spikes of lead poisoning, one at the turn of the 20th century linked to lead in household paint and one after World War II when the use of leaded gasoline increased sharply. Both times, the violent crime rate went up and down in concert, with the violent crime peaks coming two decades after the lead poisoning peaks. Read on. Nevin's finding may even account for phenomena he did not set out to address. His theory addresses why rates of violent crime among black adolescents from inner city neighborhoods have declined faster than the overall crime rate. Lead, lead amelioration programs had the biggest impact on the urban poor. Children in inner city neighborhoods were the ones most likely to be poisoned by lead. The hell is this? Because they were more likely to live in substandard housing that had lead paint and because public housing projects were often situated near highways. What did you say? Chicago's Robert Taylor homes, for example, were built over the Dan Ryan Expressway with 150,000 cars going by each day. 18 years after the project opened in 1962, one study found that its residents were 22 times more likely to be murderers than people living elsewhere in Chicago. So that's it. So this article show you that lead poisoning. Then in our communities, I think the I think the next video is gonna show how because though because we are is it the next video? Um, pull up that video that say environmental racism. 
environmental racism. Because what we just read in the article, it says that it said that the basically saying the pollution, the lead poisoning, it call it has a it says a twenty two. What did it say? Let me see. Let me refer back to it. Twenty two times more likely to be murderers right. in that community. Right, and that's what you see in them projects. I think the what Robert Taylor Holmes was one of the worst ones. They was worse right. than Cabrini Green. Right, they was bad. They had a rep. So all of these things affect our cognitive function, how we think, our IQ. So we we it these are cursed conditions. And ain't no other nation you, I don't care what you say, what you think, ain't no other nation on this earth going through the things that we had to go through. Let's get there real quick in Daniel chapter nine. Because a lot of our people yeah, you in the spirit. A lot of our people will say, no, nah, well, you know, everybody got to deal with those things. Everybody got something. No, nah, everybody, ain't nobody, ain't no nation on this earth had to go through the things that we've had to go through. Daniel chapter 9 and 11. The book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Freedom. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So verse 11 is referring us right back to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Hey. God gave us commandments. We broke them. So now we are going through the curses. That's basically what it's saying in a nutshell. Read. Hey. Verse 12. And he hath confirmed his words. It says he confirmed his word. How did he confirm his word? Look at our communities. Look at the natives. How they? How is the native? How is the Native Americans? How is this? They land, but they living on reservation. How is the so-called Mexicans? This this was they land, but the wall is built up, so they can't go to their land. Got to get permission to move about their own land. Right. So how how, these are the these are the conditions that we live in because we broke God's commandments. Read. And he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. Read. For under the whole heaven. It says for under the whole heaven. So on this whole earth where you see a sky, we there. And what we, what, what, what's going on with us? Read. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. There's no nation on this earth that's under the heaven that has gone through what we have gone through. We are Jerusalem. That's right. So there's no, ain't no nation on this earth that's been through the things that we went through. The Jewish people had six million people killed in the gas chamber, brother. What you talking about? You don't remember that? We had trillions he don't killed the in the slave trade. He don't remember the Holocaust. I got to say that because they're going to say right. we are anti-Semitic and we insensitive to their plight. We know about y'all plight. Right. But we also know about our plight as well. You gonna and how it day. overshadows anybody's plight. Right. I don't care how you try to spin it. You Free can't up. spin the word of God. Right? Can I get a uh, scripture real quick? Just real quick. Give me Ezekiel 28. Because we went into how no nation went through the things we went through. We read about how this man has done studies to understand that the lead is the thing that's causing us to be aggressive. The thing that's causing us to lose our mental capacity. How the Robert Taylor Holmes is double polluted right. with the lead that's in the, they ain't mentioned it, but the lead that's in the water from the pipes. Right. right. So lead they get in the triple dose. Yeah. They know these things. And let's see what the Lord says about that man. Go ahead, Deuteronomy 28. I mean, Ezekiel 28 and 1. We're going to read 1 to 3. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 1. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. This is going into Edom or the United States of America. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. His heart is lifted up in his pride. Go ahead. And thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God. How does he say he's God? He says he's God in his movies. He says he's God in these churches. Nobody refutes that, right? And he's prideful because no one has taken him from his spot as of yet. So he's lifted up in his pride. Read. 
I sit in the seat of God. I sit in the place of God. Where is God? I don't see no God. I have his people doing whatever I want them to do in his God, and their God is doing nothing about it. So I'm in the place of God. Right? Read. In the midst of the seas. In the midst of the seas. He's everywhere. He has military bases everywhere. This, these prophecies are pointing to a particular man. Go ahead. Yet thou art a man. You just a man. The Lord said, you think you this, but you really a man. Go ahead. And not God. Read. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Uh-huh. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Uh-huh. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. There's nothing that you can hide from this man. He's going to search it out. He's going to figure out what makes you tick. I forgot who it was. They say he... Uh, he sticks a camera up an ant's ass just to see what makes him tick. <laughs> That's Esau for you, right? They say he's wiser than Daniel. I just wanted to point that out because it jogged my memory to see that this man is wise. He knows too much. Right. He knows everything to keep us in sin so that he can remain in that uh, prideful seat that he's positioned himself to be. Yeah, and I wanted to break out just some because lead is extremely dangerous. You know, yeah. I did a did a paper on this when I was in college, and it just talks about how detrimental it is to the development of a child. And we wonder, and I want y'all just to recollect on people that you may be new from that area or that live in uh, real impoverished conditions. And of course, the Lord is a, He'll make anybody be able to get through anything. But you'll see, for the most part, this is what our kids deal with. So this it says damage if you're exposed to lead as a child, you get damage to the brain and nervous system. You have learning and behavioral problems. You have slowed growth and development. You have hearing and speech problems. Oh, All these things happen to the development of a child, and that's why they get held back a grade. Right. Or that's why they act out. Or they be in the special class. Or, or in the special class. You right. as a kid yes. laughing at them, not knowing they suffering from the hands of Esau. Exactly. Oh, okay. So it's like all these different things is put against us. And guess what? Right. You're going to act out when these things happen. You're going to lash out because now you're not on the same plan for everybody yeah. else. And just because now you can't really function everybody else, now you want to fight. Right, right. You know, you want to take your anger out on other people. Yep. This also affects people's reproductive system. I was just about to so say. when you do that as well, it, it'll cause men to have low sperm counts. It'll have women to have miscarriages. A lot of women have hysterectomies from being exposed to lead. All these things have been happening over and over again. We grew up, I grew up, uh, I didn't grow up in the projects, but my family did. So, so my you aunt, grew up by proximity, huh? Proximity, well, right. I was, <laughs> hey, I was over there, you know what I'm saying? So I was exposed to gotcha. it, too. Yeah. Spent, definitely spent nights over there and so forth and so forth. But right. my auntie had miscarriages. A lot of women over there had to have hysterectomies. Right. And even after they, they shut down the projects over there, and everybody had to move from that location, which was West Calumet Complex in East Chicago, Indiana, they all had to move. They had to pay the people. They all moved. And all of the kids was exposed to this all this time, right? And nothing, nobody ever got paid. Nobody ever made sure that the kids were straight. Nothing. And now they just wiped them all out and didn't give them nothing in return. Right. So this is, a, uh, this is how they destroy us secretly. Mm. You know what I mean? The devil. The devil. Right, that's like, all I dude, do. in the beginning, I was mentioning how he was acting like he cared. He don't care. Right. This right. is a topic of conversation where you can pay his his views or your views pay his pocket. You two pay him for views. That's all it is. Right. They don't really care. So you get, get Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty three real quick before we play this video, because this is this is how the, this is this is how we know that all of these conditions we face, we can look at it and, it's, and yes, we know on the on the um on the surface what you can see. It's the white man, the other nations that's doing these things to us. But ultimately, it's the most high God doing these things to right. us because he, we broke his commandments. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 63. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good. So at one point, the most high rejoiced over us to do good to us. That's when we was in the right man. Abraham was doing, he was doing what God told him to do. Isaac, doing what God told him to do. Jacob, doing what God told him to do. Right. But once we went off, read. And to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. 
and to bring you to naught. So now he's rejoicing to destroy us because we broke his commandments. We turned our back on him. So now he's like, oh, you, that's what you want? All right, I'm going to give you over into the hand of your enemies. Right. Read. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. That's why we don't know that Israel is our homeland. That's what we supposed to be, but we not there because we have we have turned our back on the Most High God. Pull up that video. Nationally, the facilities where we dump our garbage and process dangerous chemicals tend to be located in poor and minority communities. The people who live there have little or no protection from the industries around them, and things could get worse. So there's this idea of environmental justice. It's pretty simple. Communities shouldn't be forced to deal with more pollution because they belong to a certain race, national origin, or income bracket. Yet America has struggled over the years to implement any serious policy that actually protects these communities. So let's lay out the ways the government has failed them. We will not allow one county to become a dump site. The fight for environmental justice took off in 1982, when residents of Warren County, North Carolina, mounted mass demonstrations against a plan to dump contaminated soil in a landfill in their community. What the hell is this? The EPA investigated four similar landfills in southern states and found that they were all located in black or low-income neighborhoods. In 1987, the United Church of Christ Racial Justice Commission found that around the country, hazardous waste facilities were more likely to be located in mostly minority communities. Amid mounting proof, the federal government was forced to act. Bye. George Herbert Walker Bush. So in 1992, <laughs> President George H.W. Bush founded the Office of Environmental Justice inside the EPA. Two years later, President Bill Clinton signed an executive order requiring federal agencies to consider environmental justice in all of their policies, as well as extending civil rights protection to environmental discrimination. But Congress never passed a bill to make Clinton's executive order law. The then devil. came George W. Bush. His administration shifted the focus of the Office of Environmental Justice from protecting low-income and minority communities to all people, leaving vulnerable populations Every without time. a federal environmental advocate. 80% of New Orleans, including much of downtown, is underwater. Under Bush, many environmental civil rights claims were rejected or delayed for years. In 2009, after President Barack Obama's election, his administration recommitted to environmental justice. Generally speaking, uh, in this country, a lot of uh, environmentally problematic facilities tend to be located in places where poor folks live. Yet, during the two years Democrats controlled the House, the Senate, and the White House, they didn't file a single bill focused on strengthening environmental justice protections. Damn. Passing major environmental legislation faded further when Republicans took control of Congress in the 2010 midterm elections. What the hell is this? Now, President Donald J. Trump is making good on his vow to weaken the EPA. Environmental protection, what they do is a disgrace. Every week they come out with new regulations. They make it Who's impossible. Who's going to protect the environment? They will be fine with the environment. We can leave a little bit. You're going to shut your white mouth. What? I'm not kidding. This budget, a 31% cut to the EPA, $2.6 billion cut away from the EPA. That's what the president wants. As the EPA loses funding Damn. and regulations are rolled back, vulnerable communities may very likely fall through the cracks. I'm Talia Buford. I'll be covering these communities and digging into systemic environmental injustice. If you have something to tell me, email me at talia.buford at propublica.org. All right, so bring up, bring up the... Video is his, uh, Augill Gardens was built on top of a raw sewage landfill. The South Side Weekly. This what our folks be voting for. Our folks want this. It's not a video, my bad. I'm, I'm our folks it. want these promises that these politicians make year after year, election year after election year, and they all say the same thing. We're going to do right by you. We have an example right here of them saying that they know that these communities suffer from environmental uh, neglect. Right. right. And what they're going to do about it, they said that they was going to put bills and legislation in place, and then when their party, the Democrats, or the Democratic Party, right. had the House, the Senate, yeah. 
and the House of Representatives or the, yeah, the House of Senate, the representatives in the White House. But they had all three. They feel they signed no bills. They signed nothing in the play. That should let you know that they don't really have your best interests at heart. Right? It's Why the, keep voting? They are, it's the lobbyists. They already know that they pay the government. They, Why, they Why pay keep for voting, bill? though? I know. They, they do this year after year, time after time. And we ain't seen nothing increase from their loyalty. Right. From our people's loyalty to them. Crazy. What are we getting out the deal? We ain't getting nothing out the deal. So read that real quick. Pull it up. Lost in the shuffle. So you see there the Alt Gale Gardens. That's right. There, I think it's, it's in Riverdale, right out on the outskirts of Chicago. Read that the, the uh, caption. Alt Gale Gardens was built on top of a raw sewage landfill. The hell is this? So they built projects on the top of a raw sewage landfill. If that ain't a curse, yeah. you can't tell me what is. That, that project I was telling you about earlier was built on a lead foundry plant wow. that they dug up and put in the ground. Wow. Imagine trying to plant crops out there. What did you right. say? I wonder if the trees ever grew out there, what it looked like. The bro I wish I had the video. On, they showed the trees. The trees had cancer tumors on them. Wow. Damn. Wow. Um, See, look that up. <laughs> yeah, read that first paragraph real quick. Southside Weekly. Just south of Lake Calumet, about halfway between the Loop and the smokestacks of Gary, Indiana, sits Altgale Gardens, a low-rise public housing development with just over 3,000 residents. The neighborhood looks more like a suburban residential community than like the massive high-rises that dominate the narrative of Chicago public housing. Driving south on I-94, you're more likely to notice the landfill on your left than the neat little rectangles of two-story row houses on the other side of the highway. So not only did they build it on top of a raw sewage landfill, it's right across from a garbage dump. What? So this is where our people are, are smelling. They smelling. And if, if, you, if you're from Chicago, you ever we drove past smell. there, right. it stank. To this day. <laughs> it stank. Right. Yes, it stank. So... These are the conditions that we're living in. Get Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 14 real quick. Let's read this real quick. And then y'all can, from that article, pull up the, the one, the YouTube video of CHA collecting millions. So read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 26, verse 14. Read it. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments. So again, if we don't listen attentively to God's words and apply them, read. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you Terror. He said he's going to point over us terror. Is it not terror to be living on top of a sewage landfill? Right. Living right across from a garbage dump that all you do is smell trash all day and all night? Read. Consumption and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. So all of these things, it affects your mind. That's what we're listening. That's what we're reading. That's what we're watching. The lead paint, the sewage, the garbage dump. All of that consumed my mind. And now what we do, we go and shoot our brother dead in the street. Go ahead. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. So that's it. Re pull that video up. What they've done with all the government money they've been giving. Everybody wondered. Everybody in this complex is wondering that same question. 
Also new tonight, a two investigation. It is valuable land right on the river, but apartments are empty and falling apart despite millions of dollars in federal money. Good evening, I'm Rob Johnson. And I'm Erica Sargent. We're talking about the Lathrop Homes, a rundown housing complex costing taxpayers. Tonight, two investigator Dave Savini is on the money trail in this original report. Dave? Where has all the federal money gone and why are so many families living in horrendous conditions, including the war vet you're about to meet? Water damage. Welcome to Lathrop Homes and the alleged misuse of your tax dollars. Oh my God. The Chicago Housing Authority gets $10,000 from the federal government per apartment unit, even when they are run down and vacant. <laughs> that means here at the 925 unit Lathrop Homes, the CHA gets more than 9 million federal tax dollars a year. JL Gross lives in one of the rundown buildings. So you're the only person in this four floor apartment building? That's correct. There are 10 other units in his building, which are all boarded up. Yet the CHA still gets 100,000 of your tax dollars annually to maintain them. Do you wonder what they've done with all the government money they've been given? <laughs> Everybody wonders. Everybody in this complex is wondering that same question. Everyone should be angry about it, right? Like we're all being scammed. Leah Levenger, executive director of the nonprofit Chicago Housing Initiative, has been fighting to end what she says is misuse of public housing funds. Do the taxpayers know that their money is going to the CHA for empty buildings? Probably not. But it's not just gross building. Levenger says of the 925 Lathrop units, about 775 sit empty, which means the CHA is collecting about $7.7 .7 million a year Bruh. for boarded up real estate. That's millions of dollars going nowhere. It is millions nowhere. of dollars going nowhere. She says Chicago is one of a select few housing authorities nationwide with no oversight. HUD no longer regulates them. HUD no longer monitors them. They are accountable only to our mayor. And she claims the CHA is trying to push out remaining residents by leaving conditions this way so they can eventually sell off the valuable land. The hell is this? Desirable property? Mm hmm 36 acres of environmentally pristine land right along the Chicago Riverfront. That leaves folks like J.L. Gross, a Vietnam vet, living in poor conditions. Here's a good example. This water damage is from the vacant Moist, units above well, there's him. There's moisture in your walls. Yeah. And he it's says like there's mold. Under. So it bubbles like this when it rains. Yeah. This is your ceiling. Yeah. And fire dangers, including this escape door to the roof. Is your fire escape? Yeah. We found broken. It is a $900 million cash cow. And there's no risk of any money getting taken away because yeah, HUD no. has turned it over to our local government. Levenger says these Lathrop problems began 15 years ago. City Council will soon vote on an oversight ordinance allowing it to control 40 to 50 million dollars the city gives CHA. That's a fraction of the 900 million critics say the CHA gets from HUD each year. CHA says they offered to move JL Gross, but he declined. They are planning to redevelop the property with a private company. The mayor's office didn't call us back, and the head of the CHA wasn't available, but he, we asked for a sit-down with him in the future about these questions. Hopefully you get it. Yeah, so how many vacant homes are we talking about all across the city? Over 2,800 is what we're told. That's $28 million in money that's going to a vacant property. Damn! All right, so get Deuteronomy 28 and 43. Because that's that's some that's some evil that right. some, that's some that's evil. That is evil. You mean they they collecting money off of vacant apartments? What the hell is this? Whether you live there or not, they still collect the money. Read that. The book that's of Deuteronomy, curse. chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-three. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee. Very high. He get up above the very high. Yeah, you can get up. You can get up above somebody very high very quickly by collecting money on a property that's empty. Ten thousand per unit. That goes back to that precept I had brought out about hey. him thinking that he's God. He's in the yep. place of God. He's the only one able to do this. Like, who has the knowledge that there's all these different properties vacant? Right. We don't know that. Right. Hey. They know this stuff, they put it yeah. out, they put it in your face and dangle it in your face and dare you to do anything about it. But hey. You know what they always say? What's up? We ain't got no money. Yup. Damn. Man, we yeah. don't got no money. It's the, the city in deficit. Uh, take it from the school. Take it from yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Cold yeah. down from the school. Yeah. Cold hey. down the houses. Damn. They collecting all this money. But yet, this is the, it's the Chicago Housing Authority. Mm. But when you go through the city of Chicago, 
there's a whole bunch of boarded up houses with right. X's on them, mm. but they're collecting ten thousand dollars a month right. off of all these vacant properties. That money going to somebody's pocket, I tell you that. Exactly. Now read on. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Uh-huh. And thou shall come down very low. And we, we are down very low. We at the bottom of society. While they collecting money off of vacant units that's deteriorating. So you could, so you collecting $10,000 a month. Off a of property that probably ain't that off a of unit that ain't even worth three, four hundred dollars. Right. You gotta watch the setup though. I can imagine that they trying to make the project itself look like it's a successful venture. Keep them open. But by them being open, but not as occupied as they used to be, the violence that happened in it is not happening no more. So they could continue to report that it's a successful thing. Right. Whatever they're they're doing is working. So that they can continue getting them fun. Right. It's a setup. It's a setup. Yep. I don't think nobody give a damn at all because you know what happens. It's in, about the money. I know, Her. but what happens to a vacant in vacant apartments? People come in there and squat. They do yep. drugs. They sell yep. drugs. All type of stuff happening in these yep. buildings like this. You're so, not hearing about them crimes happening in the, in the projects. Yeah, no because they you, all they gotta do is just turn the scan off. Nobody. It was right. a shooting down the street from my house, and we heard it. But when it was on on the police, it would say it happened somewhere else. Wow! So it doesn't. They they can police stuff how they want to do it. It's, it's not right. like they're gonna do the right thing. So on paper, this stuff has to be open. It has to be functioning. It has right. to have at least one, some residents in there. As you can see, that one, one unit right. had nine hundred units and seven hundred right. was Damn. unoccupied. That's crazy. It's a setup, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, let's finish that up. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-four. He shall lend to thee, and thou shall not lend to him. Well, I bet he would be able to lend to us and not be able to lend to him. He collecting ten thousand dollars a month, so just with that, off 700, 700 vacant units, but he's still collecting ten thousand dollars a month off. They of. said twenty eight hundred over the city. That's what he just said. Yeah, that's over crazy. the city, twenty eight hundred units. Right, right. That's crazy. That is crazy. So that's what seven point seven million? Oh no, they he said, said twenty eight million. Okay, twenty eight million. That's crazy. Yeah. We in the wrong line of work. Right. We need to find a new job or something. <laughs> right. They getting money out there. Yeah, notice the title of the article. CHA collecting millions in tax dollars for mostly vacant housing complex. Right. So that means that the, those of us that are going to work, them taxes, they taking out of your check. They right. robbing us, bro. Exactly. You getting robbed. Damn. Let's finish reading that verse. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. Uh huh. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. The, the, that 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 just that system alone is gonna keep us being the tail. Yep. No matter how you slice it, no matter how you dice it, how much wisdom you think you got, how much money you think you got, they gonna always be the head, and we gonna be always be the tail as long as we are breaking God's commandments. We gotta remember that these are the things that's going on. In our communities, and we pointing out Chicago, like you brought out, like the officer brought out earlier. We only talking about Chicago, but this is going over. This is going on from city to city, state to state, small cities, big cities, all of that. So just imagine, just if you just count what Chicago, Gary, you got Danville, Peoria. You just count a few small cities and just ca just calculate how much money they collecting just off of that alone. D D these things are happening because we broke God's commandments. Right. So from there, we're going to go can ahead I, and... Can I get a scripture real quick? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Give me uh, Psalm 64, verse 5. Because this, they search out all these different things to be able to keep us at the bottom. We talked about the lead. We talked about the unfair housing. We talked about yeah. the environmental pollution. All these different things just to keep us in constant state of chaos, depression, hating one another, killing one another, trying to get over on the next person because we don't got the money, doing whatever we got to do. They set up this situation. They did it. So re read what you got. The book of Psalm, chapter 64, verse 5. Read it out. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. So they do all whatever they got to do to commit the evil to keep the children of Israel in sin 
and out of their wits. Read. The devil. They commune of laying snares privily. They set up traps all throughout our lives. Right. Like I said, from when you come out the womb, the lead, which we described about what happens to the functionality of a child. Right. All these different things, right? Read. They say, who shall see them? They say, who will see them? They stealing all this money, and they say, who going to see us? What y'all going to do about it? Hey. It's nothing that we could do about it. He's saying they don't even care if, even when it comes out. The reporter reached out to the mayor and to the government. They, they ain't even answer the phone. Like, what y'all going to do? Hey. We're going to keep pocketing the money. Read. Wow. Verse 6. They search out iniquity. They search out sin. They search out sin. They, they search out ways where we could be in an environment where we uh, stay in the midst of sin. The Whether devil. that's committing violence to one another, selling drugs to one another, the things that we eat and expose us to all different types of things where they know that if they expose the leg, guess what? It's a high chance that they're going to be violent. Hey. It's going to be a high chance that they're going to be have a substandard education. Hey. Read. They accomplish a diligent search. They work hard. They work hard at this. They, they don't go to sleep. They're thinking about different ways where we can keep these people down. Read. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. They think deep. They think in 15, 20, 30 years, 100 years down the road. Hey. How are we going to keep them down? What can we do? Right, we'll put them in these projects. We'll make it sound like we're helping them. We'll give them these food stamps and we then put food deserts bound. We'll paint the wall. We'll, we'll build a infrastructure where we're going to put over a sewage, over a dump, the hell is this? over wasteland. And look, let's see what happened to them. All right, then you know what? Not only are we going to do it in this city, we're going to do it in that city. Hey. It's a project. It's an experiment. When you're in school, something's called a project that is an experiment. All right. I wanted to bring that out because these people are evil as hell, man. So with that, we're going to go into the commercials. And go into commercials, we'll be back. Where's your emergency? Yes, I'm calling my son. Had to come home from school. You know, she said, have you heard from Kendrick? 12 o'clock, I knew he was dead. When they said he climbed inside the mat to get the shoes, I already knew that was a lie. We opened the body in this particular case, and the organs were not there. Today, we are here with the mother of Kendrick Johnson. We're here to show support, solidarity, and build with our sister. This is absolutely crazy. And as we hear this, we're hearing it now, but imagine a mother going through all of these years of unanswered questions. It feels good to have people standing with us that I know mean business. And you know, I ain't worried about it. I don't feel like y'all gonna fall off. I'm glad to know that we got some brothers that demand justice with me. What if that was your child? Okay. What if that was your son? What if that was your daughter? Would you let it go? I would hope not. Feeling the whip, hit me slow. I'm feeling the scourge and the pain in the fields. I see bodies that's hitting the flow. The sun on my back while it's bleeding. They just rape on them wife in the evening. 
this cotton is red like it's eater. And my brothers What you think about what you're saying? This is wonderful. So it's I wonderful. I've seen nothing like this ever. This is wonderful. Beautiful. We just want to see the promised land. They waited in the water. They waited in the water, children. They waited in the water. But this time is going to be fine. The Lord has commanded us to come together That's right. in one mind, one spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're making the light shine and show all the nations that we're God's people. Hopefully we can wake up many of the nation of Islam minds and the truth of this Bible. But we have one thing in common. We're all oppressed by the same man. And we are here to show people who they are and how do we come out of this condition. Facts. IUIC, the vanguard, the leaders of this movement. We are those guys. That's right. The clock was on your left. That's how you do it. Positive vibes. Community need this, man. It's a good look. Great look. We have to get from behind the pulpit and into the streets. This is where it's all happening at. So, yeah, you're going to get a little dirty. Yeah, it's going to be hard. But you know what? It's worth it. It's for our people. Why don't you live for the people? Why don't you struggle for the people? Why don't you die for the people? Chop you like a tree to wrestle with an angel, gotta have some technique. I was born to run things on track like you saying, Top G's in my vein, the truth it does spring. I'm on the kill street, for demons is buried. I'm a bearer on the side, he likes to carry. Nothing new under the sun, we got on the earth. With 150 songs, I call on my purse. You say color don't matter, then give me the verse. We the real doctors, you sleep in the church, you can call a thousand. My captains is with me, my deacons they send me, my bishops they lead me, my people they need me, the Bible they feed me, the enemy grieves me, my soul not for sale in captivity, your fate gon' be death for our liberty, your ungodly conversations stay offending me, you can look me in my eyes, you can see I die to live, watch the world end from the whirlwind, you your mama, daddy, and your girlfriend, came up out the day to build a strong name, you can look in my eyes, I will never be the same. Waging war, I'm swinging with my sword. Got spiritual cuts that the flesh can't avoid. Got faith, these laws ain't void. We hated by many cause we ain't the people's choice. What's the guy rigging out like a landline? This my earth, we gon' blow cause it's landmine. We really the teachers, we really the preachers. It's well as a land, no need for a visa. Chosen by God, live life like a saint. I'm a warrior in my golden estate. It's not a race, but keep up with the pace. Take a fall and win, push the heat and not the weight. Living life back to life like Lazarus. 12 by 12, do them never, we ain't average. Harvest time, my father gon' gather us. Better us, mad at us, you snakes can't rattle us. My soul not for sale in captivity. Your fate gon' be death for our liberty. The ungodly conversation stay offending me. You can look me in my eyes, you can see I die to live. Watch the world end from the whirlwind. You your mama, daddy, and your girlfriend. Came up out the day to build a strong name. You can look me in my eyes, I will never be the same. No, I will never be the same.
Check, check. Uh, we back, and we're bringing out local news here in Chicago. We know it's crazy out here in Chicago. We just want to highlight some things that's been going on, uh, and we bring out these curses so we can identify who we are. Who are we? Why are we going through these things? And what's going to protect us from these things? That's God's laws. All right, so give me that first video. Just showing this happened. In Chicago, this is madness right here. 
Well, Karen, that woman was shot in the head. The man we were told shot in the eye is a 21-year-old man. Police have not said if this attack was targeted or random. In the meantime, they are continuing to look for the person responsible. A neighborhood on edge after shots ring out. Very disturbing. I heard screams. Oh, this is terrible. I'm shook up right now. This is terrible. The violence erupted around 520 this afternoon in Chicago's Avalon Park neighborhood. That's when witnesses tell investigators that it was as a vehicle traveled in the 1600 block of East 87th Street that an unknown gunman approached the car and opened fire. A woman was driving with a 21 year old man and two children inside. Both adults were shot in the head and rushed to the area hospital. The Chicago Fire Department says the children were treated at the scene and not transported. I feel sorry for the kids. Yeah. And I hope the young lady makes it through. The car ended up crashing into a light pole near Stony Island Avenue. It's believed the attacker ran away on foot. Now, police did have the area cordoned off. They were looking for that individual that they believe responsible for uh, committing the violence. In the meantime, the uh, police have not said what the relationship is between the man and the woman or the children that the fire department said were in that vehicle. So we're still trying to suss that part out. Many of the uh, detectives were still on site gathering evidence, hoping that some uh, security cameras in the area will help lead them to clues that will help them get the, these individuals who are responsible. Watch breaking right. news. So on this YouTube. happened. Subscribe to this Ant happened about a week ago on the south side of Chicago. I'm gonna just do a quick recap. Two adults were in a car, a, a guy with two children in the back seat. A, a, a individual comes on the side of the car, shoot them both in the head with the children in the car. This is what took place. And took off on foot and took off on foot. That's what happened. So this is a curse that doesn't happen in the other people's area. It doesn't right. happen in little, in, uh, what's that, little China. Little Italy. Little Italy, Chinatown. Chinatown. All it, it doesn't happen there. It just happens in our communities where people get shot down in front of children. Hey. Them children will never be the same again. What the hell is this? Them children will never be the same again. If those were their parents, they had not they lost their parents. So give me uh, Matthew chapter 24, 24, verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Just to show that it's prophesied that things are going to get worse and worse in our communities. We're going to have to be that beacon of light and put the shield of God on us, and that's these commandments, to help shield us from what's going to happen. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Read it and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It says, and because iniquity shall abound, because sin's going to, that murder, that trying to get revenge, that's had to be revenge hey. to get payback. So if iniquity going to abound, guess what? The love of many going to wax cold because there was a time where the, when the, even the killers, quote unquote killers, they would not shoot nobody in front of nobody's hey. kids with kids in the car. Their way to get them at a separate time is when we, even though it was still crazy back in the day, but at least they had some type of cold in the air. Now they have shoot people in broad light in front of their kids in the car with the kids. So this is just highlighting how dangerous things are getting. It's only going to get worse and worse. So the gangsters used to be like Scarface. Remember the movie Scarface? He right. said, I ain't killing no kids. Exactly. He's not killing no kids. Right. So they didn't kill kids or do dirt in front of kids, but now they like King Von. They don't care. Yeah. Right. They will, if a kid is present, do they dirt in front of you. Exactly. So, all right, so that was our local news. Now we got national news because IUIC is, we making moves. We making moves. We are the, the vanguards. We are the good guys. We are the ones that care about our communities. We are the ones that are showcasing and letting our lights shine. I'm so happy to be a part of a, a, such a group of men and a, a, a rebuilding the nation because without this, I wouldn't have no purpose. And right now, like I said, we are basically, we're being called to come help people because now, we're getting so big where 
our reach is going beyond our belief. So when you guys are sharing things, it's going farther than you think. This information is going, going to be spread out throughout the four corners. Do your part. All right, so let's show that video. Stop for a second. So let me just give you a quick. This is going to the Kendrick Johnson. The brother was killed, put inside of a, what's it called? A, a gym mat. And basically his body parts was missing. All type of stuff happened. And they say he did it to himself. And the family is still fighting. And we're helping the family to get justice. We're putting a voice behind them as well. So and we, we, we just went to Washington, D.C. this past Saturday and went and did a press conference with the parents to show our support. We love our people. We are not a hate group. Right. Read. I mean, play the video. <laughs> We're not here to play games and be it. Today we stand in solidarity with the Johnson family whose son was murdered by the sons of wicked people. We stand in solidarity with many of the families who have died erroneously. Even this week, a young man was murdered, hung in North Carolina. Brothers and sisters, we must repent as the Israelites get our lives together in conjunction with what this Bible says. There will be more murders that white people do to our sons and daughters. More murders that the FBI, CIA, law enforcement cover up and don't ever believe these churches in solidarity with us. Black people do not stand in solidarity with us. They come here in Martin Luther King's dream, his lie, talking about we all get together. It's a lie. We have not seen it since the time of slavery. Right. These murders, unjust murders, we will receive no justice until we return to the one true God. So brothers and sisters, as the Israelites, we must repent of our sins and ask for justice and judgment on the United States of America. Justice and judgment on Babylon the Great because that is the biblical name of the United States of America. Our hey, Bishop was cooking. Right, he was praise, out there right. cooking, telling us what we should be praying for. Right, right. Hey, that shakes and ruffles a lot of feathers. Folks don't want to hear that. That ain't that good old time religion folks used to hear. Right. 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 And we go out here and we doing these marches. We doing all these things. It's a media blackout. Right. Nobody is showcasing any of the things that we are doing for our people. And it's, it's not even being put on any type of news station or anything. So we have to do it, Israel. That's, That's right. why this is national news. This is national news. It has to be put out there to show what we are doing for our communities. Right. We're not, we, we teach the Bible, which is the most important thing, but we also show care for our brothers. We clean up communities. We, we, uh, we do you, you violence seminars. We're doing all these things to be able to help our people in this time of distress. Right. And even Bishop, he mentioned, and I wanted to showcase, the brother that was hung in the Carolinas. He mentioned that. That's stuff that's still happening. So to pull up that next video, and this brother was from, he's from Chicago. He was from Chicago. So, play, and this, this woman, before I even showcase the video, she posted the video, it went viral. It went viral. So when you post things that go viral, other people see them, it can get spread like a wildfire. That's because right. Because guess what? It wasn't on the news. This wasn't on the news. All it takes is one click. One click. Right. One click. That's it. You can make a difference. You can make a difference. All right. So play the video. <laughs> my family desperately needs your help. Um, this is my little cousin, J.B. McGee. He's from Chicago, Illinois. He was 21 years old and would have been 22 in a few weeks. Um, he was found hanging from a tree in Henderson, North Carolina yesterday. Suicide or lynched? This is J.V. McGee, a young black man who was found mysteriously dead, hanging from a tree by a rope. The sheriff says that they believe he went to Walmart, bought the rope, and then hung himself to death. However, the family, the cousin you see here, made a TikTok video saying that's BS. Javion is not the suicidal type. He would never do that to himself. Clearly, this is an act of a racist attack. I'm damn sure you know the good old boys are up there running around. 
Maybe they definitely wanted, you know, they wanted some blood. Very well that, I mean, think about it, it is the Deep South. Those places, no joke. And the reason why Javon was up there because he was a truck driver driving for a company. So the sheriff says now, since they're getting more pressure from the community, they're looking at this and they're trying to find more evidence. Every avenue, crack, crevice, to hopefully find who's responsible for this because it is very weird. Still too soon to tell exactly what went down. Could have been a suicide, could have been a murder, covered up as a suicide. Again, too much to say. Right now, it's under investigation, all right? So if you guys want to know more about the story, tune in, follow me for updates, but for now, play the rest of the video. I'll see you guys in the next scene. Be safe, bring news reporter, subscribe for more. Um, he drove trucks, so that was his reason for even being out there. The police officers are trying to say that he went to Walmart and purchased the rope and hung himself. We crazy. obviously don't believe that, and we are just asking for your help to push his story out there. There's no, there's, this isn't, covered on any local platforms no news stations radio none of that so we're trying to push it out there we really need your help the um police officers in the corner of corners office are giving us a hard time um not allowing his mom to identify the body um at one point they told her um she can't identify the body due to covid and then the next day today they told her um the father has to give her permission for that, which he said what? that he would. She asked if they could send her pictures at least. They told her yes, and then turned around and told her, oh, I don't think that you want to see your son like that. What the hell is this? Come on. Like, this is just... This, this is just very devastating for my family, and we really, 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 really need to push this story out there. So if y'all could please repost this video, keep saying his name, JVI McGee. Um, hashtag justice for Javion, and we are going to fight for him, and we are standing behind my cousin 100%, and they're not getting away with this. So please, share this video. So we see this time and time again. They are saying the man hung himself in the South. In the South. The devil. Do you understand that these people do not care? It, even after that, it's an open and shut case. All they do is just say, oh, this is how we found him. We're not going to do no research. He committed suicide. He bought a rope. He committed suicide. He did it. The hell is this? Nobody doing no investigation. When we die, there's no investigation. But when, when layers come up missing, it's press conferences, everything. Right. It, it keeps happening over and over and over again. This is not the first brother that was home. Check his bank statements, his records, and see if he actually bought a damn rope at that right. Walmart. Do some investigative work. Don't just assume. And that's that pride. That pride says I can tell their community anything because they are scattered people. They don't have no leadership. Hey. They don't stand for one another. Hey. They don't even love each other. So hey. why should we? We could tell them anything. Exactly. That's why, that's why it's important what the men of Israel are doing today. Right. It's showing them being watchers, watching out for their souls, letting them know, look, it's time to come back together as a unit, as a nation. We watch each other back. So things like this. Don't be named amongst us. And I highlight this. I, I charge you all to share this just like how we shared the Kendrick Johnson. Absolutely. I charge share. all you to share this to get the word out. One button. Right. All you got to do is one click. Hey. Because if it was one of your family members, if it was your brother, your father, your cousin, your nephew, you would be feeling the same way they feeling. Hey. Absolutely. So we have to show that same care. We cannot let that love of many wax cold within us. Mm. If they, they know if they know one of us was put to death and we felt it and they knew we would all rise up and, and say something about it, no. this would happen less and less. Most definitely. Most definitely. So, uh, you got something you want to add? I want to grab, pull, get uh, Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16 and then jump to 19. Because we see this, they say, they, they it's a lie. It's it's, a, it's alleged that they say it right now, but it's a lie. Ain't no way that he just went, he went to Walmart, bought a rope, and hung himself. Come on, man. Read that real quick. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith. So we talking about the wicked. The wicked is Esau. The wicked is Esau, the white man. Read. What hast thou to do to declare so my statutes? Go ahead and jump to uh, 19. Verse 19, thou givest thy mouth to evil. They give their mouth to what? Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Read. And thy tongue frameth deceit. This is what we're seeing right here. Automatically off the jump. No investigation, nothing. No open case or nothing. Oh, he went to the he went to Walmart 
and hung yourself. How do you know that? If, 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 if that's the case, how do you know that? What a proof at? What a fact. Right. What a video footage from Walmart that showed that he went in there and bought a, right. bought a uh, rope. Come on, man. Right. So, all right. So, that's our national news. Our national news is what we did out there in D.C. We marched. We stood up for Kendrick Johnson. They got an ongoing case going on with that. And then we also highlighting this brother that passed away here in Chicago. You know, so let's make sure that we're sharing this information. Next, we're going over black history facts. Black history that you would not be taught in schools because all they told us was that we was Africans, uh, butt naked, walking around, uh, right, shooting, right, right. Shooting uh, flutes, what they what they call it things? Right, they they told us. Look, basically they civilized us, but that's not blow true. Blow darts, I think it's what it's called. Yeah, wrong. blow darts. Right, they civilized us. Right, but that wasn't the case. We civilized them, believe it or not. Right. We are the salt of the earth. Right. Everybody has been copycatting us since the beginning of time. Period. Point blank. That's it. All right, so let's show that next video. Bring it out. The Moors, North Africans who conquered Spain in 711 A.D. and ruled until 1492 A.D., were highly educated in the knowledge of Kemet, Kush, and Greece. They introduced new scientific techniques to Europe, such as the astrolabe, and promoted significant advancements in astronomy, chemistry, physics, mathematics, geography, and philosophy. Renowned historian Basil Davidson noted that in the 8th century, Moorish Spain was highly admired and comfortable to live in. At its peak, Cordoba, the heart of Moorish Spain, was the most modern city in Europe. Its streets were well paved with raised sidewalks for pedestrians, and at night, ten miles of streets were illuminated by lamps. Centuries before Paris had paved streets, or London had street lamps. Cordoba also boasted 900 public baths, highlighting its advanced infrastructure and public amenities. We are the salt of the earth, Damn, Israel. Son, Whatever we put our minds to do, we can accomplish anything. Hey. So give me that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Wash your ass, nigga. Right, right. <laughs> That's what you... All them bathtubs. All right. Them bath we, we, was, we are clean people. Even to this day, we hey. see the video. I wish I would have got a clip of that. White folks don't even take baths like that, man. Hey. They say they do. And then they say they just let the soap run down their head type deal. With the hands they wash. All right, so read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13. Bring it out. Ye are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. So when you think about all the inventions that was made, right? Even when we was in slavery. Bring it out. We made the cotton gin, the automobile, the refrigerator, hey. the air conditioner. Hey. All the amenities that we have today we made those things in straight up oppression. That's right. So when they took us from those shores, when they took us from these different places, they didn't take no dummies. Right. No matter what they tell you, we have high intellectual uh, minds. Okay? That's not something that everybody has. They know they took precious people from these lands. Just as they always did. History just repeats itself. So, read on. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Right, and we have, we're losing that savior. We're losing it because we're not coming back to the one true God. Yeah. Like, get, and guess what? Not only that, we're being attacked by the enemy, by the so-called white man, the Chinese man, hey. the Arab man. All these people is who, what, who feed us in our communities, Right? The white man, we, we, we went over earlier today, is going to the projects that he set up, going to the lead that we've been exposed to. The All these things are to keep us from losing, having, to losing that salt that we have, hey. that flavor. Without us, guess what? We will be living in the Stone Age. Do no. y'all not know that? Hey. That's, read on. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. We have to tap back into our God. We have to understand our worth. 
We have to teach our children that they the greatest thing on this earth. Right. That they are above everybody. Right. We do. You have royal blood running through you. Right. We are God's chosen people. We have elite minds. All right? For us to be able to do that, like I said, all those inventions we made in slavery, the society they built in Spain, all, you know, do you not know we built every world power? Freedom. We built all these nations. We built the wall of China. Hey. We built up Egypt. Hey. We built up America. Hey. We built up Spain, hey. Portugal, hey. Uh, Greece, hey. Rome. Hey. We Those did this. Funny looking dome houses. What is that? Is it Turkey? Yeah. It's in the Arab nations. You know, they right. got the gold domes and they said nobody can ever replicate that. Oh, that was uh, that, that's, uh, Istanbul. Man. Is it Istanbul? I can't think of the name. Of I think it's Istanbul. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. We have did all this. It's one of the seven wonders you name. I can't. It's think one of it. the seven wonders, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so we've made our things, and also I got some some books showing what those people look like in Spain. So let's show that first uh, picture of that book. You mean black people was in Spain before? Black people was in Spain. All right, That's, they, the conquistadors came from them as well, but. The black people, when we ruled, we ran all that, all right? And they left relics there. They left pictures there. They left artwork there, mm. all right? So uh, let's, let's show that picture. All right, so it says, Spain, a history in art. So this is what this is going, this is going to show us, the history of the art in Spain, old ancient art. So next, next picture. So this right here is a picture of some Moors, we right? In this building. Why he gang banging, man? What's right. going on, bro? <laughs> Our people cannot get enough right. of this idolatry. Right. Look at them fingers, bro. Right. All of them got something going on with their fingers. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, this man. shows right here that these brothers was high intellectual. One playing the harp. You know what I'm saying? They they looking clean. It just shows ancient art of what our people look like. What's going on? With right, the these is more. More just mean black. You said what's going on with the the, the leopard sister? So yo yeah, yeah, I didn't get I didn't get to that. Oh, so what they that? was doing? That's going to that old kind of uh, iconoclasm what you they was doing. Crazy. So they was taking. I was going to show that in another picture because okay. it shows it more I got distinctly. You, I got you. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is not I know. As good I know. As the one I would want to show. Cause she still could be light skinned. You know it's worth, it's I'm worth light, being pointed out. I, I'm light skinned, so she could still be light skinned. Nah, some brown around her. <laughs> so, but uh, hey, next picture. I don't know if we can read that. Can we zoom in? Yeah. It says a serving woman brings food and wine, which, though prohibited by Islam, was much uh, drank at Muslim Spain. And attended strums a medieval harp and two gentlemen converse in the 13th century manuscript illustration. 13th century. That's how old that is. That's that means right. from the 1200s yep. to the 1300s, that's when this was made. Yep. All right? So that's when we rule. Before Those Christopher dark Columbus. ages. You said what? Before Christopher Columbus. Before Christopher Columbus. This is the dark ages. This is who ruled in Spain. Next picture. This is another picture right here. This shows. Let's zoom in on that. All right, so go. You see at the bottom right there. I wanted to start at the bottom. So you see that bottom right? You see he has an afro? That's an un undeniable afro right there, correct? So he has an afro. He's dark-skinned. And then go up. Go up to that next person above him. He has an afro, right? You can lighter. see that they scraped off the color off of the skin and the hands. You even look look directly to the left right there. You see, I don't know if y'all know exactly what I'm saying. You see his hand. His hand is dark brown. His hand. What they did was those halos that we had on our head, those halos that they put, like the little gold halo looking thing, that was an afro. That was an afro. That wasn't a halo. They made, in order to, to disfigure the photo to make it seem like it was another nation, they put that there, but it's actually an afro. You look at his look at his feet. He didn't have shoes on him. His feet was dark. Right? So that's this is our artwork that took that was over there in Spain that they found. 
And they they did this iconoclasm where they, like I said. Look at the hands above. Yeah, his hand above at the top left up there. Both of them, both of their hands. Yeah, both of them. And yeah, he gets scraped out in the middle. So they they didn't even finish doing the the, the disfiguring of this photo, right? I mean, of this artwork. All right, so uh, next next picture. I think if I had this is another one. See how he's dark. The first brother is dark. The second one dark. They're getting lighter and lighter <laughs> as, they, as they going. These is old pictures, old books that they found over there and just showed that our people ruled that area. We was never taught that in school. That's right. Never. Never taught. We was just taught we came from Africa. Told that we was, all right, that's it. That's it. That we, never that we ruled anything. All right, next picture. So that's, this is, uh, I forgot. It's, it's, go to the next picture real quick so I can say who it is. Zoom down at the bottom. They always say it's Maurice. This wasn't Maurice. This is another. So this is a mulatto noble in service of King Philip III. All right, with gold jewelry and carries a Spanish uh, pike for patrol. So that was one of the patrolmen for the king. But go back to the, the, the but look how dark he is. So this, in order for you to get a picture done of you, you was not a nobody, okay? Even if you want to get a portrait of you right now, somebody paint a portrait of you now, that costs a lot of money. That's Look how right. he dressed. What's Look, going on with the uh, drills uh, and uh, all the... Uh, what, what is that? Exactly. He, ain't, he ain't dressed like no commoner. He's uh, dressed like royalty. Exactly. So this is what's going on in Spain. Like I said, this is just further proof of what we saw in that little clip earlier. These people was dark-skinned people. Right. These was more people. These was Israelites. Right. All right, next picture. All right, so this is another book. I just want to bring multiple books. So go up to the top. Early Spanish manuscript uh, illumination. So this is what they found in Spain as well. All right, so next picture by John Williams. So that's the picture right there. So that is Christ and the angels. That's supposed to be Christ in the middle. Just zoom in on that so they can see a little bit better. Right? That's going into that green garment he had on reading Revelations 1 and 14. That's, that's supposed to be a depiction of Christ. You see how the angels is, is, is black. Christ is black. They all know this. This, is, this is, was a very common thing. All right, so next picture. I'm going to get those words. I don't know if you're going to uh, – I'll read it. Just go to the top. Zoom in a little bit more for me. All right, so it says, Christ – whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost negroid cast. You hear that? Christ, whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost negroid cast. So they said, no, he's not, he not a negro. He looked like a negro, but he's not a negro. They put these words in here to deceive us, but you see that he's a dark-skinned man. That's not the image that we've seen all around when we grew up. They say darkened, like somebody intentionally well, yeah. took his image from what it was, that lily white image, and right. dirtied it up, darkened Damn. it up. Damn. Right, it says, and shown enthroned between two cherubs. Cherub is angels. That's what that is. Cherubs is angels. So that is what you're seeing. You're seeing the picture of Christ from the 13th to the 1400s. So thanks for tuning in, Israel. This was Watchman Radio. I'm Officer Abel. This was the uh, excellent news and an excellent black fact segment. You did an excellent job. Oh, uh, we're going to transition uh, back to the officer so we can continue on with the rest of the show. So we thank you for tuning in to the Watchman Radio, the decree of the watchers. We'll see you next time. I'm Officer Samakaya. This is Officer Yokonai. Officer Abel. Shalom. Oh, praise you.
Heat rules 13, 17, profits on the scene. Wash your souls clean before we go into the gasoline. Took a while to understand. Psalms 111, 10. Weather calling me from Mississippi, trying to build a man. I flushed 14 grams, it made angels rejoice. It made me and Satan divorce. No spot of support. I'm running the course with my hand to the plow. Now, putting in the pebble the way Soldier James taught me how. Break it out. It strengthened my spirit when we in the building. Ain't no feeling like giving the precept for a precept giving Preach M.O.V. conditions Teach Self a second living We Second Timothy 215 Represent us Sheesh Will the common interest Prophesy to the wind Reveal the man of sin Enduring to the end We watch the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel Cause we watch it for Israel We the watchmen for Israel